To receive job alerts and perform advanced search, you first have to register as a user and log in. For the purpose of this lesson on job openings on Inspira, I choose the basic search. So I search again for an HR position. I found four active currently and I choose the first one. Every job opening on Inspira contains the following information. First, in the head, the job type. In our example, we have human resources officer and we have the level, it's a P3 position. But we can have senior economic affairs officer, senior water transportation officer, program management officer, and so on. It depends on the available position that is advertised. You will also see the department and the office, for example, political affairs section, environmental unit, staff counseling unit. In our example, we have the department of field support. You will also have the duty station, in our case it's New York, and the posting period of the job opening. The job opening will be removed from the careers portal at midnight on the deadline day. You also have the job opening number which is generated by Inspira and is based on the advertised positions attributes. It consists of abbreviations of the calendar year, the job family, the department and so on. You will also have the UN core values, integrity, professionalism, and respect for diversity very clearly stated. Read this carefully, the job title already gives you an idea about the type of duties and expected qualification even if you are not very familiar with UN terminology. You can be a project officer or an admin in different departments, offices or agencies, but most of the positions are specific to substantive sections. A civil affairs officer, for example, will be in the civil affairs section most of the time. Some duty stations are more difficult than others, some are francophone and some are anglophone. You have to know that two-thirds of UN missions are in francophone countries, so this will give you information about the expectations in terms of language proficiency. I don't personally remember a situation when I needed the job application number other than for an interview or assessment for a position on what I applied some months before receiving the UR shortlisted interview. Pretty useful information for preparation to go back to the job opening and see all the details. Try to give meaningful names if you file this for ease of reference. Second, you will have here the job opening description which includes the organization setting and reporting, the responsibilities, the expected competencies, and the required education, the needed work experience, the required and desirable languages, and the standard assessment methods. You'll also have a special notice that is valid for some positions. Some will be subject to project appointment, some will be subject to renewal, and so on. So, since UN is so big, a short description of the institutional framework in which is located the advertised position is needed. The responsibilities are highly detailed most of the times and first they define the context of the job and then the main substantive functions for the positions but also for whom it works, the person in occupying this position and with whom it interacts. This will help you prepare for assessment and interview but mainly to tailor your cover letter and your CV. Use this information to have a successful application, use the keywords, use the phrasing, use the structure. We will see how to, we can do it. The standard competencies are established for United Nations Secretariat jobs. At least three most important are listed and described for every job open, and one to more if the job includes managerial responsibility. You will find attached to this lesson a booklet describing all the competencies for the, for the United Nations jobs. This makes competency-based interview predictable and gives you the possibility to prepare in advance. You will be asked for examples and probe based on these examples for each competency markers, which are transparently, as you see, present. In this case, we have three competencies, professionalism, planning and organizing, and client orientation. And here you see descriptions of these competencies. What is exactly expected from you as an applicant? So try to use this for your application and later for assessment and interview. 
keywords, phrasing, structure, adapt your experience to your job application and be prepared. Because during a 45 minutes up to 3 hours assessment or interview, you might forget things. Don't let this happen. The educational requirements clearly establish a minimum level for the specific job. Sometimes you will also have the needed or desirable qualifications and certifications for some specific position. The minimum work experience is also stated, clearly stated, and here you will have two parameters, the required minimum number of years of service and the area of relevant experience. In the applicant's manual, you will find the exact requirements for specific positions and the situation when these requirements can be reduced or will be evaluated in combination with education requirements. But in every job opening, they will be clearly stated. You need to specify the language you know and the level. Here, some of us are tempted to overestimate. Don't do it. At an interview, you will need to prove you are functional in a language required. For the desirable languages, you might have some abilities and might be enough. But if it's required, you need to be a functional speaker at in that language. The assessment methods are generically mentioned. When you will actually receive the shortlist email, you will get more details and you will be able to prepare. Each and every job opening will have the UN considerations statement and the no fee state. The United Nations shall place no restrictions on the eligibility of men and women to participate in any capacity and under conditions of equality in its principal and subsidiary organs. The United Nations Secretariat is a non-smoking environment. So you will see this consideration statement all the time, more detailed or less detailed. The no fee statement, the United Nations does not charge a fee at any stage of the recruitment process, whether this is the application, the interview meeting, the processing training, the assessment or any other fees. The United Nations does not concern itself with the bank accounts of the applicants. Next video, next video lesson will cover the evaluation criteria. Understanding this will help you in tailoring your application and assessment and also your interview approach. After this, before starting to fill in an actual application and to learn the good practice in doing this, we're going also to detail the pre-screening and eligibility rules. Something to take from this lesson, read the job opening carefully. Read it before starting to work on your application. Don't waste time doing the useless application just because you did not read the job opening carefully.